So I thought I'd have a go at drawing a blue iris using pigment marker and going for a more expressive approach. But I think it turned out a bit of a fail. So let me know what you think. And to challenge myself, I decided that I was not going to use a pencil and I was not going to use the white blender pen. And I was just going to use the big fat chisel uh, nib to do everything, no fine nibs at all. So it would be hopefully a bit more expressive with that big fat chisel nib. That's perhaps a ridiculous amount of challenge to start a drawing with, but it's what I decided to do. So the first thing that I did was, not using a pencil, decided to use the lightest blue color that I was going to use to try and lightly sketch in um, the outline of the, uh, the petals and the entire flower, just again using the chisel nib, so no fine nib here. So I'm trying to use the chisel nib on its, on its edge, on its sharpest edge, to try and get the finest, thinnest line that I can. And this worked absolutely fine for the big, big outer petals and also some of the inner petals. But once I got into the center of the flower, the chisel nib was just too big, too chunky, too unwieldy to do those really fine, delicate little petals in the center. So already some of the challenge I'd picked up and decided to go with was beginning to backfire on me. So with all of the outlines done with the sky blue marker, I then decided to do the interior color on the three big main petals. And because it's kind of a bluey, kind of purpley kind of color to the blue iris, I decided to use violet blue deep as the main darkish color uh, when doing the, the petals. So I'm laying down some of that color using the sort of the thinner edge of the chisel nib. So I'm not putting down too much dark color. And then I'm gonna try and blend that in using the sky blue marker. And I'm using the sky blue marker just to kind of blend in with the darker colors, just to get a nice base color that I can then start, you know, um, adding to, um, adding detail to, getting some definition on, because I'm aware that the blue iris, the photo reference that I'm working from, has got some really nice kind of very delicate kind of veiny pattern that runs in the uh, petal. So I want to try and get that, I want to try and show that, even working... Uh, as expressively as I'm trying to, I still want to make sure I've got that kind of feature of the petal. So the fact that you can still see the marker streaks from the violet blue deep that I put on is okay because I might be able to manipulate those, blend those a little bit so they look like the, the kind of veins that I'm talking about. So I decided to add some darker colors here and here I'm using the very edge of the chisel nib and you can see it's putting down some big, fat, juicy, you know, wadges of color on there, which looks great but I've now got to try and blend those in. And I think what I've done here is made a bit of a mistake and put on too much dark color. And that was going to prove very, very difficult to blend in without just making everything look really, really dark. So I'm here with the sky blue trying to blend that dark color in now and, and sort of pull that color down with the, the marker so I get those kind of streaks, those veins that I've been talking about. But it's looking a little bit rough and ready and the more I work it, the darker it seems to get. So I'll make a mental note to myself here to make sure I don't add too much of the dark color when I do the other petals. Um, but as you can see, even with the best of intentions and idea of what you're going to do, you still can manage to overdo it. So I try the, the other half of the petal in exactly the same way. I put the streaks of the violet blue deep in. I try blending with the sky blue. And then I go back to the violet blue deep and I just add way too much here and I just really shouldn't have done that. And you just see when I try and blend in with the, the sky blue here, it just gets swamped. There is just too much dark pigment on there for me to blend adequately. And here's possibly where if I've been using the, uh, the white blender pen, I might have been able to salvage this a little bit better. Uh, what I end up doing is just trying to use the sky blue and flicking strokes upwards to try and get those veins. And as I start to do the center of the petal, which is this lovely yellow kind of spear shape with Windsor yellow and uh, Windsor yellow deep, I'm already beginning to get a feel that perhaps the picture is not going my way. It's not going the way I want it to. Um, but, you know, I'm only, you know, a third of the way through, so I've got to keep going. So I tidy up some of the edges on the upper petal. So you've got the idea of 3D, so it looks like part of it is hanging over, almost like a hood. Uh, and then I get ready to do the second and the third petals using the same approach, which unfortunately means using, again, too much violet blue deep color and then having real trouble trying to blend that in with the sky blue. So I've done all the three outer petals at this point and they're looking okay. Now I've got to do the center and I've already got an idea that the chisel nibs are going to prove a bit too clunky and a bit too fat to do this very delicate area justice. And that's pretty much how it goes. Even though I'm trying to use those chisel nibs on their side, on the very sharpest point. So as you can see, I'm trying to get the thinnest lines that I can. 
it's still resulting in loads too much of the darkest color going on. So here with the interior petals, I use mauve to try and blend in because these interior petals, before they've kind of bloomed, they got a much more purple look than the outer petals that have begun to take on a much more blue kind of color. So, you know, I'm trying to be expressive with these strokes of, of the mark, you know, flicking inwards, getting some nice edges on those. So, you know, it's going okay, but I can't help but think, how much easier this would be to do, this small delicate area, if I was using the small fine nibs. And I'm wondering why I've set myself this kind of challenge in the first place. I know the idea is that if I use the chisel nib, the drawing is going to be looser and more expressive because I can't get all kind of noodly and detailed with it, but that's kind of not working right now. So if it's not going my way, why am I persevering with it? Why am I trying so hard with this? Well, it's because I've always believed, even if a drawing is going bad and you're really having a wrestle with it, if you fight with it long enough, you can kind of make it come around to the way that you want it to be. Uh, and the feeling when you do that is it's really, really good. You're like, yes, I kind of beat the drawing. I managed to get it around to the way that I want it to be. So I was sort of in that mindset and that's why I haven't quit and started again. That's why I'm determined to sort of keep going with this and try and turn it around. So as you see me try and do the really, really delicate petals in the center, I'm completely ignoring my own advice and I'm using the violet blue deep way too much and there's too much dark color in there and it's basically just gonna swamp everything. Even though I'm in there with the mauve now, trying to balance it, trying to blend it, trying to lighten some of those edges, it's just too much in a small, delicate area. So as I'm getting close to finishing the flower, I'm thinking, yeah, it's not too bad. Maybe I can kind of save this. Maybe I can pull this out of the bag by doing a decent background around it. You know, someone to really make it pop off the page and, and look, you know, amazing. Even though in the back of my mind, I've kind of got an idea that's not going to happen. Um, but I go in here and I use a few greens and a, a bit of blue and some yellows to try and put in some kind of strokes of reeds and leaves in the background, grasses and so on. But I'm kind of my own worst enemy here because I haven't tested this. I haven't had to go at, you know, using these greens, test them on a different piece of paper to see that the background's going to work. So because I'm a bit lazy that way, it does backfire on me even more. So I start getting even more down on the picture because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. Some of the greens look a really bit unrealistic. Uh, you know, I'm trying to salvage it with some yellow and orange here and there. But it's just, yeah, it's beginning to get me down even worse. I decide that I'm going to add a bit of blue into the background to kind of darken some of those greens and it's the same blue that I've used on the flower so I'm hoping there'll be a kind of color connection um, between the background and the flower you know working on this but the blue is not dark enough it is almost a similar kind of uh, brightness to the bright greens that I'm using and at this point I'm just getting so down about it that after just doing this little bit of blue here I just say yeah that's it I've had enough it's not working and I kind of I concede defeat. So is it a fail? Well, for me, it is a bit of a fail because it doesn't do the image justice. I've got this really nice photo reference of a blue iris with these dark patches, light patches, nice little veiny details, and I don't think I've done that justice. You let me know in the comments below what you think because I think I just made it way too difficult with the challenges I set myself. So because of that, I decided to do a second one. And the next video that I post will be the tutorial showing you how I handled this with all those challenges and difficulties thrown out the window, done my way.